Hey guys, uh, Big Air Zero One here, coming at you with another video. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about five different areas that uh, you should look at when you're buying a used dirt bike. And I do have some bad news uh, in regards to this motorcycle, but uh, for now, just sit back and relax and enjoy the video. So let's start with, uh, this is a 1986 YZ80 that uh, my wife had purchased for me for about $300. I never got a chance to look at the motorcycle when I went to go and, or when she, when it came for sale. So she was able to go and get it for me. And I thought it was a decent deal for being $300. The guy said it basically ran um, and there was just some carb issues uh, with it. But uh, with that, I think uh, after looking at the motor itself there's a lot more than wrong than just the the carburetor with this thing which I'll go into at the very end of this video I'll tell you sort of what I found with this motorcycle so one of the things I like to do before I uh, go and look at a bike is I'll do some research uh, on the bike that uh, is for sale and what I'll do is I'll just try to figure out some parts like some prices on some of the parts and stuff like that that uh, will assist me in in making an educated um, decision on purchasing a used dirt bike and what it would cost me if there were certain things wrong with it. So definitely one of the things you should do before you go and uh, look at a dirt bike is know what it's going to cost you or you know some of the main problems that come with these dirt bikes. If you do your research you know you know what to look for and what to expect when you're looking at the used dirt bike. When you're also going to look at the dirt bikes, you should probably bring some tools with you just in case there's some things that uh, you want to take a boo at or maybe just, uh, you know, like maybe a compression tester, some screwdrivers and some wrenches just to be able to pull off some of the parts if the buyer or the seller will let you. Uh, it helps you look at, a, a, have a closer look at it and maybe he'll do it for you, I don't know, but there's certain things that, you know, you need tools to be able to look at closely. So the first thing that you should be looking at is your overall appearance of the motorcycle. You know, like if looking at this motorcycle, you can you can usually tell um, how it looks or how it was maintained by how it looks. Um, so like this is, you know, if you look at this bike, it's got cracks, you know, all through the plastic. When I first got it, my wife had, um, she didn't know anything about motorcycles, but, you know, she was a lovely wife and, and went to go and pick it up for me. But there was parts missing all over here. As you can see, I've got some extra parts here and was missing clamps there and this and that so you know um, you basically just want to make sure that when you look at it you know how many like how much scratches dents or missing parts so the second thing I would look at would be the overall frame of the the motorcycle so a couple things you'd be looking for would be you know uh, missing paint any kind of cracks or anything like that like you know, especially where things bolt to it, like you would have your engine mounts here, you'd check for cracks. This bike didn't have any cracks or anything like that. You've got engine bolt mounts there. You know, you'd want to check to make sure that the bottom of the frame isn't bent or, or got dents in it. Um, because that, you know, would show you sort of, you know, how the abuse that this motorcycle potentially could have taken. Uh, you're going to look for cracks, you know, anywhere all over the whole frame that you can see. You know, you're going to want to look up in here and... Make sure the subframe's somewhat straight and not bent. Um, you're gonna want to make sure that your handlebars and stuff like that, and all the levers, all work correctly. Um, you know, it's it's important that you check the frame over. The third thing you'll look at uh, is your basically anything that uh, involves the tires. So you would check to make sure that each tire has air pressure. When I bought this, it had no air pressure in any of the tires, but it's been sitting for a while. Um, these tires do hold air now, so tubes anyhow are in decent shape. Uh, you're going to look at, like, check for any kind of loose spokes or any cracked spokes, cracked rims. Uh, you're going to want to check your brakes to make sure that they work, right? So, you know, as you can see, that one works. You know, your front, my front brake on this bike doesn't work because the guy didn't take care of it, but, um, you're going to look at the, 
the tread depth, I mean, you're looking at about $200 for a set of tires, right? Front and rear. You're going to want to make sure that, you know, there's no, there's no cracks like this. I mean, this is an old tire. You can see right here, it's got lots of cracking in the tire. Um, you can see it right there. All of that, you know, that just tells you that this is a very old tire and it's going to have to be replaced, you know, for it to be safe, right? Um, then you're going to want to check, you know, on the front and the rear. I don't know if you can hear this. If you can see it but these wheel bearings are messed up they're done they don't i mean they need to be replaced you're looking at about twenty dollars you know for for these it's hard to do with one hand but the front one seems okay um but then you're gonna look at you know your brakes like when i bought this bike it didn't have it had you know basically just a couple pads in there and they were destroyed this is basically how i got it it was you know not all together and then you know you've got your master cylinder here i mean it's got oil in there but it doesn't work uh i'm gonna have to replace some parts in there the rear brake is drum so it seems to be okay then you're gonna want to check your your sprockets to make sure that they're not pointy or oil worn in an unusual way these don't look too bad i mean it's not the greatest the guy didn't I mean, both the front and rear look fine on this bike. Um, you know, you're gonna wanna check your brake lines and stuff like that. So, but yeah, that, again, it's important that you look at this stuff because hopefully you'll be able to negotiate some, you know, costs off if you find some things that are not 100% or, you know, you know you're gonna spend a lot of money on to fix. The four things you're going to want to look at is your front and rear suspension. So on this one, this one's got a, a monoshock in the rear and it's got uh, forks in the front. So you're going to want to check to make sure that, you know, your swing arm bushings, like you're going to try to make sure that they're not, they're not loose or worn out. You would basically grab the rear frame and just see if it moves between the engine. And if you feel any play, you would, you know, those, those would have to be replaced. You're going to look at your rear monoshock. To make sure like this one looks like it's in pretty rough shape it's rusty and the paint's chipping off i mean it's just old right um you know then you're gonna want to you know most of these most of these uh motorcycles have uh, a gas cylinder that you know uh is either gas or air and sometimes they'll have an adjustment which um i don't see an adjustment on this one but without looking at it closely uh, you'd have to take it off and check to see but some of them you'll see like a knob on them that you can adjust the suspension you know when you're sitting on the motorcycle if it sags and it doesn't come back right away or seems kind of slow coming back you know those are things you need to look for moving to the front forks you're going to want to check you know your triple clamps to make sure there's no cracks or anything like that again you know that kind of stuff will go a long ways you're going to check for dents and scratches on the actual tubing part of the the forks you're gonna to wanna to check to make sure there's no oil leaks. It'll basically be draining down here. It'll be full of dirt and crud and you'll see it all over the forks when you go and look at it. Those are things that uh, are good indicators that you know your front suspension might need some work. So the last thing we're gonna look at, uh, the fifth thing is your engine. So you're gonna to wanna to look really closely. This is the heart of the whole bike. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this thing uh, is uh, got everything that you need to be able to potentially get this thing running. If it doesn't run, or if it does run, then, you know, it doesn't have any oil leaks that, or, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, you're going to want to check over the whole motor itself. Look for any kind of cracks, dents, oil leaks, water leaks. As you can see, there's a bit of a water leak here. Um, you know, even after replacing that part, it's still leaking there. Um, you know, you're going to want to check the oil. Um, you know, if you had some wrenches, you could check to make sure that it had uh, the like if you know where the oil check bolt is which is here on this bike um, you could check to make sure it had the correct amount of oil because a lot of people have no idea sometimes when they do an oil change they either put too much or not enough oil in their in their oil um, you can smell the oil you can check uh, the dipstick this one doesn't have a dipstick it's checked by this but sometimes there's a dipstick as well uh, when you're smelling the oil you're going to want to make sure that it doesn't smell like it's burnt uh, usually which would indicate uh, a burnt clutch or something along those and you want to make sure that there's no contaminants in the oil you're going to want to check for water leaks so you're going to check for the cracks in the hoses you're going to check the radiator cap and pull it off and just look in there as you can see it's green but i just changed it 
um, from the last video I put put it all in there you're gonna want to check to make sure that there's uh, splines uh, aren't stripped on all of these like you got your Kickstarter which is fine on this one but when I bought this I took the the uh, shifter off and this was stripped and I couldn't get it back on so I custom made this and it's working for now but it's not gonna hold forever the last thing you want to do is pull apart your whole motor and uh, have to change that spline because you have to pull a whole thing off or you would just weld one on there which would make it a pain in the ass if you ever crash it and you broke it you're going to want to check for any kind of leaks uh, around the carburetor uh, or the pepcock itself make sure that there's no gas leaks you're going to want to put it into gear uh, either when it's running and not running and just make sure that it rolls freely and that each of the gears work be nice if you brought a engine compression tool to be able to check the compression of the engine. You just take the, the plug out and screw it in there if the buyer would let you do that. And it would help you decide, you know, how how good the top end is. And, and you know, with this bike, you know, after I, after I looked into uh, this bike and further, you know, when I brought it home, there was a lot of things wrong with this. And this is sort of the last part of this video here. Um, it appears that... There's something wrong with the crank on this side on the Magneto. If you watch my video, check it out you know, when I take it apart. Uh, I have a video on that on my channel. But anyways, the the, the crank uh, shaft on this side isn't completely true. Uh, so there's one thing wrong. Uh, this shifter for me is not going to last forever. So you'd have to weld it or replace it, which I don't want to do because it's just, I do not want to split this motor apart if possible. So, um, the clutch for some reason on this uh, isn't uh, disengaging, so I'm not sure what's wrong. If there's some, if it's locked in gear, if the forks are bent, or something on the inside of that motor, and I'm not sure why. When you pull a clutch in, uh, when you have it in gear, it doesn't roll freely. Uh, there's, you know, a few things wrong that uh, I haven't been too impressed with. So unfortunately, as a result of that, there's, you know, uh, a little bit too much. Uh, money that has to go into this bike to be able to keep this project running i mean i don't know what your guys' thoughts are but i figure i have about two thousand dollars to be able to put into this bike to make it uh running uh and safely right so you know for me that's too much so uh, let me know in the comment section below what you think uh of uh this video or if you think that i should uh you know rebuild this this motor and uh, try to get it running or maybe potentially find a used another YZ80 and throw it in here I mean there's not a ton of other stuff wrong with it it's just a matter of you know putting it all it's just too much money but I think I'm just gonna part it up sell it and part it out uh, I probably get my money back hopefully out of this um, you may not get the parts that I put into it but I figure I could get about 300 bucks for just the bike the way it is so anyways I just wanted to that's unfortunately the bad news of this bike. I'm thinking about parting it out. So um, if you have any comments or questions, please uh, leave a comment below. Like the video and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.